James Charles says that Jeffree Star ruined his life? That's giving lies and deceit. Let's talk about it. This is Rich Lux with the hottest news on YouTube. Okay, this all broke over on TikTok when Kathy Griffin and Rosie O'Donnell decided to spill some tea about what really happened at Paris Hilton's Christmas party. This is one of those situations that like what happened a year ago is now coming out today. And I'm really shocked about what happened. This is not good after people are alleging that James Charles is copying Patrick Ta's new blushes. It's a mess. It's some drama. So let's just jump right into it. All right. So I'm going to roll you the clip of Rosie O'Donnell and Kathy Griffin talking about James Charles. This is the podcast. Here we go. Roll it. Went to Paris Hilton's Christmas party. Rosie O'Donnell was there as my date. James Charles was there. Oh, and tell Rosie, me more. Rosie went up to James Charles and accidentally said, aren't you that guy, Jeffree Star? Oh, <gasps> James Charles did not take that well. I no. can imagine. Really? So I was trying to calm him down going, she's a lesbian. She doesn't wear makeup. She's not responsible. <laughs> she can't, you can't be mad. Now, before we go any further, drop a heart in the comments down below if you made it this far. Leave me a thumbs up. It helps me out so much. You guys, I don't know what's been going on with the YouTube algorithm, but I would really appreciate a comment, a like, a share to one of your besties or something. Like it would just mean the world to me. Like if I ever made you laugh, if you find value in my content, at least give me a like, drop a comment, a share, a subscribe. I can't get subscribers to save my life. So take your mom's phone and subscribe to me or something because I don't know what's going on with this algorithm, but I'm like shook by it. Okay, so I was really taken back by the fact that James Charles feels this way about Jeffree Star. And I say this because we haven't heard how James Charles really feels about Jeffree Star. Now, we do know how Jeffree Star feels about James Charles, but I do want to say this. I have a different backdrop because I'm in LA for Coachella and just, you know, LA vibes type thing. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. So wish me luck. I'm currently in Beverly Hills. I went to the Polo Lounge today. So if you want to see any of that, check out my Instagram story. Check that out as well. Okay. So I do want to say this, right? For James Charles to say that, I'm shocked because he's saying this in, in, the, in Paris Hilton's house around other people. So then that must mean like Paris and all her friends kind of know. Maybe they're like looking at Jeffree Star like, oh, that's so shady the house. So I don't know. What I do know is that Jeffree Star has not responded to any of this. But I do think this is a good opportunity for Jeffree Boom Boom Star to respond because you know, let's just be honest, drama sales, and here is a classic instance where James Charles is talking behind Jeffree Star's back, and this is another situation where Jeffree Star is right again, because I think Jeffree Star has been feeling that James Charles has been talking behind his back, and this is an instance that proves that. This is an instance where they're at a Hollywood party, and James Charles is telling people that Jeffree Star ruined his life. So then if you are a fan or like James Charles and you're automatically going to be like, oh, well, Jeffree Star, if he ruined your life, I'm so star. He, he's so shady in the house. I don't want to be associated with Jeffree Star. And Jeffree Star had, does not have a chance to defend himself. So maybe now Jeffree Star might come forward and defend himself and say something about this. But at the time of making this video, he has not. So, but I kind of feel like he doesn't even know that this happened, but maybe now he does, and maybe he might say something in response to James Charles talking about him behind his back. Now, this isn't the only drama that James Charles got into, because for a couple months now, James Charles has been teasing blushes. He's been wanting to come out with cream blushes and powder bl blushes, and like blushes is like a big deal right now. And I'll link some of my favorite blushes in the YouTube shop. So take a gander at that. Some really affordable ones as well. By Elf. I think, yeah, by Elf. Those are the good ones. So here's what James Charles has been, has been saying about his blushes. But then he's being called out for copying Patrick Ta. And he actually responded. So here we go. Roll it. Am I losing my mind? Or are people on here just like crazy? And let me clarify, I love Patrick Ta, so this is not shade to him, okay? One of the nicest people in this industry, so talented, a massive inspiration of mine. But like, you can't look at these two things and say they're a copy of each other. Can you? Like, just because they're both in a rectangular component and have a cream and powder formula inside, just like Tom Ford, just like One Size, just like Juvia's Place, just like Charlotte Tilbury, just like every other brand? Huh? I'm trying my best here, people. Okay, there are only so many different ways you can put two formulas into the same package. And respectfully, I feel like we're doing a pretty decent job in that department so far. But 
I do apologize if anybody feels like we're copying anybody else. That does bring me to the point of this video today though, okay? If y'all are such little sticklers and packaging designers, you be the CEO of Painted for a day, because I have a question for you. I've been working on lip balms for the past couple of months for Painted because they've been highly requested, and I got these samples in yesterday. And unfortunately, after about four months of work, um, we've decided to completely start over because the formula of this sucks, and I want you guys to have the best. I'm trying to design the packaging, and I am struggling a little bit because I really want ours to be unique and on brand with Painted. Uh, but speaking of brands, copying each other. I don't know if you guys have shopped for a lip balm recently, but they all look exactly the same, which is also no shade. This is how the beauty industry works. When one component is really great at applying a product, other brands are naturally going to use the same component. And I guarantee none of these brands were the first one to invent this packaging either. So I could design ours with a similar looking tube, but if I do, I know that I'll get comments saying that I copied this as well. So I've been trying to brainstorm something a little bit more creative and unique for our packaging. I really am open to anything as long as it's on brand with painted and the rest of our packaging designs. And it also can't be too crazy as well because I want to keep these super affordable for you guys. James Charles, I'm so over it. In this video, responding to my comment james charles is saying that his blush is just like any other blush on the market and he gives lots of examples now i'm going to go through them and show you that his blush is a complete sort of ripoff of patrick taw's so this is patrick taw's blush and something important to note is that the top is a cream and the bottom is a powder this is the painted blush that he is formulating again with a cream blush and a powder he could have done it just a little differently, but the exact same format. He said that his blush was just like Juvia's Place, which is a duo powder. There's no cream. He said it was like Charlotte Tilbury, which is a blush and highlighter, no creams. He said it was like Tom Ford. Again, a blush and a shimmery blush topper, no creams or anything. And also the one size, which this is the most similar. There's a cream and a powder. But one size does something differently and they add their own highlighter, like blush topper thing. So then we can get back to this blush. Like, tell me this is not the exact same as that. Even both products have little lids on the cream that you fold up to use the product. He didn't even place them in different spots. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? And he knew that this was going to stir the pot and ruffle some feathers. And it did, because now he thinks that I'm just a hater, and I'm not. If the packaging was unique and different, then it would be a different thing, but it's exactly like the Patrick Ta, even down to the format of the cream and the powder. Now, James Charles did respond with, like, no one cares, girl, or something like that. But in all actuality, I think that James Charles does care because if he didn't care, he wouldn't have responded. But here's the thing. I think what James Charles is actually trying to say is that when it comes to makeup and you go to a factory, it's like, here's a tube that everyone uses and we'll put your logo and name on it. And so it's yours and your formula, right, or your scent. And what really separates a product from any ever, anything else is scent, packaging, and then like the branding and marketing behind it. So if all that is to be true, then I think that what James Charles would really have to do is come up with a custom component, which would mean a custom mold that would separate his packaging from everyone else's. Because if that's the case, then you might as well just go to like Alibaba the house and just pick something from there. Because all that stuff looks the same, which is cute for starting a small business, like something fun and cute. But I think if you really want to set yourself apart, you would have to have some type of custom mold or component, which costs a lot of money. So I don't know if James Charles is willing to do custom components, but at the time of making this video, Patrick Taw's formula is really great. So I'm really curious to see what is going to happen with James Charles formula because we really haven't heard much of his brand painted since the launch of his palette and the little cream shadows. With that being said, I do think that James Charles is in some way struggling to come up with with launches because if you have a makeup brand you need to be coming out with launch after launch after launch parties collaborations flying in other influencers to be a part getting them all paid and it is a lot of money to keep up this upkeep at the same time remaining in budget 
within the campaign. So it's a lot of work. It's a totally stressful situation, but also it takes a lot out of you to constantly be coming up with new ideas, new innovations when everything's been done before when it comes to makeup underneath the sun. Now, all that to say this, we do have some drama with Glamzilla. Glamzilla is being called out because she apparently came up with this makeup hat that shows you how to do transfer proof lipstick. So she basically puts on lipstick and sprays it with one size setting spray and it puts, hits a blow dryer to it. And she's like, look, mm, that is transfer proof, not gonna go anywhere. They're lying to you. It's 3 p.m. in the beauty community and I'm already being called a liar. Well, I'm starting to get the hang of this and you know I love a clap back. So this video is dedicated to the non-believers, the underachievers, the video response and deleters, not cool girl. It's different when it comes from the comment section. When it's a fellow creator, a beauty creator, not cool. Play well with others. That's the number 16, seven rule in beauty. Okay, so the video that she's talking about, it, it just didn't work. My hack didn't work for her. But sis, let me show you what I actually do. And I'm going to do it in uh, real time. No cuts, no edits, no makeup, no filter, none of that. So you could really see. And hopefully this hack works for you this time. Um, don't send hate to that creator, okay? So basically, I go in with a what? I go in with a one size setting spray. This is the on till dawn mattifying waterproof setting spray. Not up, not, not sponsored. Wish it was. And we're going in with a, the Fenty Beauty. This is so good. Okay. This is the Fenty Beauty Velvet Liquid Lipstick in the shade the MVP. This is the iconic Rihanna Red Lip. Anytime you see Rihanna with this, it's good. Ugh. Hold on. Let me, let me apply it. This is not edited and not cut. So it's going to be awkward. Hold on. Enjoy that. Look at that. Now that is a freaking lipstick, okay? But my problem is it transfers. That breaks my heart. Um, and the reason I, f I found out about this hack is because I wanted my lipstick to match my outfit, but was not transfer proof. And by fluke, I used this and it worked. So I'm gonna go in with the, oh, wait, no. I blot my lips first in that hack. I don't do anything else to it. Girl, in your video, right after you blotted, you reapplied the lipstick. That's why it didn't work, sis. Ah, try it again. I go in with a one size setting spray, then I dry it. Then here is where the ultimate test is. Is it transfer proof? Yes, it is. I guess it wasn't that embarrassing for me, was it? Thank you. Um, nonetheless, be nice. Well, people are trying this and they're basically saying, you lied because it's not working for me. Anything else to it? Girl, in your video, right after you blotted, you reapplied the lipstick. That's why it didn't work, sis. Let me try this. Glamzilla says that this is a way to get your lip to be transfer proof. So I'm going to try it out. Um, I would love me a transfer proof lip. This is, y'all already know what this is. Because this has been all over everybody's FYP. I did try this color and I didn't really like it on me. But we'll try it again for this video. Going in with Fuchsia Flex. Okay, now I'm just going to spray some one size. Ugh. Oh, I forgot to blot. Okay, I'm going in again since I forgot to blot. I I, I pay attention. Tell. Okay. There's barely any lip product on there anymore. Mm -mm. I need a different color. I guess I'll try it with a NYX red because I don't have anything else that will show up on camera. Fenty, this will be the perfect opportunity to send me um, some new lip products. I would love to do a review. Okay, 
This lip color is terrible without any makeup on, but we're not here for looks, we're here for science. Taking this corner, okay. Okay, now I'm gonna spray this and I'm gonna keep my mouth closed this time. Mm, that got up my nose. Letting it dry, letting it dry. Okay, 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 here we go. The moment of truth. I still got some transfer. Girl, I don't know. Maybe it just worked for lighter skin tone people or something. In my opinion, I'm going to defend Glamzilla and say everyone's skin is different. And everyone does things differently and everyone has different types of textures and just oils and vibes with their skin. So what works for me may not work for you. And I think that's what she had to say. But here's the drama. Here we go. Anyways, all that to say this, we have some other drama with, is it Skeppy or Leo Skeppy? Leo Skeppy issued an apology on you TikTok, I think it was, because he basically was saying that like, what I got out of it from my interpretation was that like, fat people can't wear skinny clothes or something like that or like these brands don't make skinny clothes for fat people the same way or whatever i just got i know that like when i shop at fashion nova usually they'll have like one dress and it's like all the way from zero to like 5x like they they kind of do really good with like having a dress for all sizes but a lot of brands don't do that so i think that's what he was trying to say but people took it the wrong way and i am no way defending him he could defend himself but he also made this apology video, but didn't even issue an apology. So it's kind of weird. So he's losing subscribers over this apology. So here we go, roll it. All right, to hit this properly, the ego is checked at the door. I got some shit to own up to. I deleted the video because it does the opposite of what I want to do. It made a lot of people feel unsafe with me. And that's the last thing that I want. So this is not going to be a sappy apology video and be manipulative to try and win anybody over. This all made me realize the time in my life when I was overweight actually does trigger the fuck out of me. And it's not the body and the way that I looked that triggered me. It's the painful mindset I was stuck in that I do not want to be reminded of. My whole childhood and early adulthood, I felt very trapped and powerless in a body and a mind that I hated. It wasn't my physical appearance, I thought it was. It was really feeling like I had no control over my life and what that perception did to me. And now whenever I feel powerless, I say jarring shit to myself to snap me out of an old mentality and look for empowerment. But me sharing that in the fucked up way that I did was to help a lot of you and it ended up hurting a lot more of you instead because you feel like I judge you for the way that you look. And it also made a lot of people feel like I was judging them for wanting to feel included. That's not what I stand for at all. I never want anyone to feel uncomfortable or unsafe around me, ever. But the way that I said things in that video made a lot of you feel disempowered and criticized instead of feeling like I was looking out for you. And that's always my actual intent and that don't sit right with me. So the video has gone. But not finding my size in things is something I deal with daily. I'm six foot seven and a size 16 shoe. Clothes are a pain in the ass. Shoes rarely ever find. Bags, the strap rarely long enough. It doesn't fit over my body. But that's a situation for me that makes me feel very powerless is when my size is not made. And like I said, I say triggering shit to myself to look for the control I do have when I'm looking at things that make me feel disempowered. And when a brand doesn't make my size, I look at it like saying fuck them versus giving them my attention and begging them to include me or bullying them to include me. It's 2024. These brands know that people come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. They're aware. They're choosing not to make certain things, either it's a financial decision or it's an attempt to actually exclude you. But my personal relationship to that is feeling disempowered and not giving any of my attention to it. But not everybody has my same relationship to this scenario or the same relationship to feeling powerless. And I don't like that my shit made a lot of people feel hurt. That's my thing to deal with. Everybody is allowed to freely speak their mind Shouldn't have said that because I was doing it in that video. But the thing I should have communicated better was I find my power in absence. So I'm not gonna give attention to the brands who don't cater to me. 
I'm gonna go find the brands and focus on the ones that do, or make my own stuff when I can. With all this being said, my aversion to powerlessness and my own relationship to it, and my poor communication of that, made a lot of you think that I have an aversion to you because of the way that you look. And I wanna make sure everyone knows that is 100% not true. I actually do wanna say thank you to everyone who voiced their opinion and told me how hurt you were by this because it really made me reflect. When people say I'm hurt, that's my wake up call of like, you did something because that's never my intent. So instead of sitting here and saying I'm sorry because those are just words and they don't do anything for anybody, I'm gonna give you my word that I'm gonna continue to do any work necessary to make sure that you always know and feel that I'm looking out for you and I'm here to protect you. Now that's all the drama I have for you today in this video. Let me know what you think about all this drama in the comments down below. If you made it this far in the video, drop a heart emoji in the chat. This is Rich Loves with the hottest news on YouTube. Mwah.